Hello lovely people, my name is Emma and today I'm bringing you another 8th of the grade, this time focused on the history of science. So history challenge is right around the corner and history of science is a kind of subsection of history that I really enjoy reading about. Some of these kind of, the, the line between a science book and a history of science book is fairly vague, so some of these might be able to fit into both, but I just wanted to bring a little bit more of a spotlight onto these. I'm also going to link down below my history, uh, my like science and biology recommendations video just because that one's incredibly popular. Um, of my entire back catalogue and has some really great recommendations for like strict science books. I think there is one book that features on both of them so feel free to check that out. But let's jump in and let's talk about some history of science. The first book I want to talk about is Hidden Figures by uh, Margot Lee Shetterly. This is um, based on, it's now got a movie about it as well. And this is the untold story of the African American women who helped win the space race. And uh, basically it is looking specifically at the African-American communities who moved to, I can't remember the exact area in, um, in America, but basically moved there because originally they were helping to um, build planes for World War II. And then after World War II, it was kind of like, what do we do with all of these people in this place? And that was kind of where NASA came from. And then sort of how the space race sort of fueled that. It looks at race relations in America at the time, sort of Jim Crow and what was going on from more of a civil rights perspective, but then also looks at very much this history of the space race and how did kind of America get up onto the moon. Um, how to get a man up into space in general and it focuses on I think it's kind of four or five women that it sort of really zooms in on and talks about kind of their lives and their kind of day-to-day -day experiences and through that you also get some of the history of like computing and where the term computers even comes from um it like I said there is a movie I really enjoyed the movie it's not the most accurate in the world it does take some liberties here or there as it always will it is very hollywood hollywoodized i guess is a word for it but i do enjoy the film and it has some cracking actresses in it but yeah really really enjoyable really interesting and fun to have a history of science that isn't just like history of medicine which a lot of my books definitely focus on um, more of kind of a history of physics as such in there as well the next book is spook by mary roach this is science that tackles the afterlife and whilst there is some modern day stuff in here it also looks at um in the victorian era this kind of pseudo science of trying to commune with the dead that was taken incredibly seriously by some very brilliant minds of the day um but definitely was just a load of hokum it's not my favorite of mary roach's mary roach is a fairly iconic non-fiction writer who picks various topics and then does like a deep dive into them um often looking at the science behind them and each chapter is focused on a slightly different aspect of whatever topic in general so this is spook um which is a obviously focused on the afterlife like I say not my favorite of hers I think she's stronger as some other books but when it comes to kind of the history of how did we get where we were and sort of the history of the ideas this is definitely the most historical of all of them and has some really interesting um sort of looks at how people were able to trick other people and sort of some of the pseudoscience they used and why it was still believed and then sort of trying to move more towards scientific approaches to the concepts of like the afterlife and how can you even really do that and does it even really count as a science so very interesting for towing that line between science and pseudoscience very much dependent on where you feel and kind of fit with sort of religious beliefs i guess now we're going to talk a little bit about history of mathematics and for that one i have a brief history of mathematical thought by luke heaton so math is something that a lot of people definitely don't enjoy thinking about or reading about um it's something that a lot of people didn't enjoy in school but this i think is a really great book for opening up maths and kind of seeing sort of the human side of it and kind of where did a lot of these ideas come from there are going to be big chunks of this book that depending on your kind of mathematical background are going to go over your head they definitely went over mine and like i would not consider myself particularly um mathematically skilled but it was super interesting and seeing where these different ideas came from and sort of the different strands of maths and how they developed over the time and sort of branched off from each other and sort of how did we get to where we are today. Um, so yeah, really, really interesting and fairly well explained even though it is quite techy. And I also really appreciate the fact that the back has like a further reading list broken into like accessible to not accessible for the different areas. So if there's one that really jumps out at you as like, oh that was really cool, it shows you where to go on next. And I have actually looked into some of the books in the back and added them to want to read this. So a great intro book. The next book is The Radium Girls by Kate Moore. This is both a combination of a bit of history of science and a bit of kind of history of public health, I guess in some ways, but the two are very much twained. And it is looking at 
at um, the women who in the kind of turn of the century early 1900s were working in a watch factory where they would paint use radium paint to paint the numbers onto the dials of the watches as they glowed and they were using their mouths to like um, get a nice kind of fine point on the paintbrushes but in doing so they were ingesting a lot of radium which then led to radium poisoning which was unknown at the time so it covers how did we discover radium poisoning and sort of our understanding of what radium did to the human body which is awful by the way it is horrendous what it does to you and then also the struggle that these women went through to really try and get compensation and changes to the workplace and sort of they're one of the really early examples of workers trying to sue their um, kind of company that they work for to try and get proper health benefits because of it, it because of the kind of subject matter it does cover the use of radium in medicine because there was a period of time where we thought that radium was fantastic and could be used to treat pretty much anything and everything um so at one point they were the women were being told like working here will be beneficial to your health not actually lead to your death um so yeah really interesting from a kind of public health perspective and kind of how medicine has changed over the years as well as like i say a really good example of um kind of human rights violations and sort of uh movements towards better working conditions it's so harrowing i cried at the end of it fantastic book deserves all the hype that it gets and it is quite hyped on booktube this next book i read ages ago for my very first non-fiction november that i ever took part in and that is the butchering art by lindsay fitzharris this is a look at joseph lister's quest to transform the grisly world of uh victorian medicine so just before joseph lister really came onto the scene we um developed anesthetic which uh, meant that surgery went from being something that was a proper like slapdash, do it as quickly as you can before they die of shock on the table to something that could be done a lot more controlled and more measured because you actually had the ability to put somebody under so they weren't horrendously conscious for the entire process. So because of this, it then meant that we had the opportunity to change how we thought about how clean things were, the process in general, really putting in some kind of control measures. And Joseph Lister was one of the biggest names of sort of really pushing for this idea of uh, kind of antiseptic and sort of better cleaning conditions and really changing how we thought about germ theory. So fantastic book, incredibly accessible, um, really, really well researched and well explained. I did read it a while ago, so I can't really remember some of the details, but I definitely super enjoyed it at the time. And if I can, I'll try and link down below my nonfiction November wrap up where I talk about it a little bit more because it was obviously a bit fresher then. Uh, the next one I want to talk about is The Fossil Hunter, which is by Emily Schelling, I believe. And this is a biography of Mary Anning who was one of the very earliest fossil collectors and her discoveries down in Lyme Regis not of dinosaurs per se but of various things that lived in the time of the dinosaurs so we're talking about like plesiosaurs and pterosaurs um, and more kind of aquatic creatures and flying creatures um, definitely helped the great thinkers of the day um, kind of come to their conclusions and sort of was um, really really influential so women were not really allowed in spaces where um, scientists were working and she was very much self-taught and it was kind of about her life trying to get recognition and the sort of contributions that she's made and then sort of how she was often snubbed and overlooked. It's a fantastic biography and I think Emily Schelling does a really good job of talking about kind of articulating the gaps in information we have about Mary Anning and sort of why this might be the case and, and the fact that this is so often what happens for marginalised groups um, throughout history is because priority is not given to recording their thoughts at the time it means it's much harder now to go back and learn anything from them. It's a fantastic book if you are interested in paleontology at all and the kind of the history of paleontology and how we really came to our thoughts about things like evolution and the history of our planet. Um, really really fantastic would totally recommend. The next book I want to talk about is uh, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks by Rebecca Skloot. This is fairly iconic as a pop science book and again a technically speaking counts as a uh, history of science but does have big chunks of just science in it and Henrietta Lacks her cancer cells were taken without her consent when she was alive and then used after her death um, in extensive amounts of research because she was one of the first examples of an immortal cell and if I believe correctly the only example we have and by an immortal cell what I mean is if it has some form of food supply it will constantly keep multiplying and 
um, will basically never die. So it offers a fantastic control for a variety of different experiments because you don't get those variations within cells. It also means that you can multiply the cells, which means that you're not trying to constantly take samples and they can be used extensively in lots of different research um, far more cheaply than getting cells from other resources. However, these cells were taken without her consent. Her family never saw any kind of financial profit from it. And this book is a look at um, how did that happen, the history of kind of cell research in general and what Henrietta cells, um, the kind of advancements it led to through science, but also um, kind of the the discrimination that her family faced because um, Henrietta Lacks was black and it kind of feeds into a general culture and history of black people's bodies being exploited by the medical community for the benefit of white audiences. So it does talk a little bit about that as well. It also details Rebecca Sloot's time with the Lacks family and trying to find out more about what happened to Henrietta and kind of her developing relationship with the um, family who are still alive. It's a very emotional book. It's a little bit dissatisfying in places and Rebecca Sloot is incredibly present because it details her actual like um, investig investigations um, with the family. So that's not something I overly enjoy as much in a history book. I kind of prefer my authors to be a little bit more removed, but it's a really, really important book. I can totally see why it became so popular and it is a fascinating kind of micro zoomed in look at a very specific area of history of science um, in kind of the past hundred years or so. Really cool. The the final one I want to talk about is one that I read years ago and I can't actually remember if it has any history in it but I'm pretty sure it does and that is Mutants by Armand Marie Leroy. Um, this is on forms, varieties and areas of the human body and it is just looking at the various different ways that uh, the human body can mutate and kind of genes can mutate and how do we understand these mutations. Like I said I'm pretty sure it has some history of science in it but Full confession, I did read this absolutely years ago and I can't really remember much about it, but I did want to mention it. Um, I do mention it in a little bit more detail in that science and biology book recommendation video that it will be down below in the cards. So feel free to go check that out. I read it more recently when I filmed that video, so I might have more coherent thoughts. And um, I have fond memories of reading this book, even if I can't really remember much of the information in it, which yeah, it's one that I've not really seen mentioned on booktube. It was written in like 2003, so it's quite old now but might be worth a read, who knows? Let's finish on a really vague note. So do let me know in the comments down below, have you read any of these? Do you have any particular history of science books that you'd like to recommend to me? I do have a few on my shelves, a couple have snuck into my History Challenge TBR that I'm really excited to get to. And I just really enjoy history of science and history of medicine in general. So have a wonderful reading week and I will chat to you soon, bye.